Your online store is built and ready to go, your products all lined up on those virtual shelves, and you're just waiting for customers to come on board and hit that buy now button and go through the whole purchase process and buy tons and tons of products. Pretty cool and exciting. However, there's still so much more work that you need to put into place on top of just having the store built. And that's exactly what we're gonna look at today. I'm gonna to go through three different things that I think you should set up once your online store is built to ensure maximum efficiency of converting those interested parties into paying customers and ultimately returning customers. Now today we're gonna to be using some of the features of OmniSend who've kindly sponsored this video. But as always, no opinions are going to be expressed. I'm simply gonna demonstrate these key features that I think you should put into place then you can make a more informed decision for yourself. The cool thing is I'm going to be using the free version so we can test everything out. You can follow along with me with no cost at all. And then when you're ready to upgrade, the options are there for you. Okay, so once you've connected your OmniSend account to your online store, I've covered this in previous videos, link in the description. The first one we're going to take a look at is handling one of the most common issues with any kind of online store, and that's cart abandonment. And all that basically means is someone has added a product to their shopping cart, or they've got to the checkout, but they haven't completed that purchase. It's still sat in their shopping cart or their basket, or they're just at that point in the checkout process, and then for whatever reason, it all stops. By using abandoned cart options, like I'm gonna cover now, you can ultimately recover a good percentage of those potential lost sales, all done automatically behind the scenes for you. So let's take a look at how we could set this up and implement it. So from our dashboard, we're gonna pop into automation. So once we're inside here, we can preview and start a workflow, or we can explore any of the pre-built workflows that we can use as templates. Let's do that. If we take a look at the left-hand side, you can see things are broken down into three different groupings. We've got type, goal, and channel. What we want to look at is the type option, and specifically the card abandonment. If we click that, that will filter things down, and you can see we now have a range of different pre-built recipes to be able to use. Let's take a look at this abandoned card. Let's click on Customize Workflow. This will then show us the whole workflow, the trigger, which is the first thing that actually causes the actions to take place. In this example, trigger leaves it inside their shopping basket. The actions are send emails over a period of time. So let's break things down a little look in a little bit more detail. If we take a look at this first one, which is our trigger, take a look at the right hand side, you can see we've got control over lots of different aspects here. Then you can see what is the actual trigger itself. In this case, add product to cart. But we've got a lot of different options inside just if you create something on scratch, you can use the options here. We're gonna keep it to the option we have available. Then we've got trigger filters, so we can add additional filters here to ensure that this is only triggered when specific criteria are met. So for example, let's open this up. We can say there's gonna be a cart subtotal, so this maybe will only trigger after certain items have been left inside the shopping cart, the total of value over, let's say $100, where you can set the cart total or subtotal inside here, and that has to be an additional filter. We're gonna leave that as it is and cancel it, but if you want to add more, you can do. Then you've got your trigger inactivity time. This specifies how long that item has to sit inside the cart before this trigger actually takes effect. One hour seems perfectly fine, but you can customize that. If you want to, you can get even further into this, like audience filters, exit conditions, and so on. So you may say that if someone starts this, but they actually go and complete the purchase, for example, during their time inside this workflow, you take them out of it, it stops, they don't get emails that make no sense because, well, they've already bought the product. You can also specify the frequency. So there's a lot of options here, should you want to use them. Then we've got the next option, which is the email. So this is the first email that will go out, and then you've got a branded email with the content you want to put on there. So the first one might be, oh, looks like you've left something in shopping cart. We've kept it and saved it for you. Click here to go and purchase it. You kind of get the idea. Then we can say, wait for X number of hours, minutes, days, whatever, then jump onto the next email. And again, this one may be a little stronger. How would a 20% discount help you in completing your purchase? Again, you get the idea. So we can keep on adding here. So you can see this is a three email sequence, but if you wanted to add more, you can add more. And all the options are available on the left-hand side for to customize how this all works. Any delays, split testing, A-B testing, you can get as detailed as you need to. But from a simple point of view, this is probably all we need. We can then click on save and close. 
That now has started the workflow. You can see it tells us what it is, the name of it, tells us it's enabled, and then we can see how many emails are sent, the open rate, the click rate, and the sales. So not only can you set up these abandoned cart and abandoned checkout process uh, sort of sequences, but you can also have it that it'll tell you how many have been opened, how many have been sent, and how many have actually converted into sales. Great way of testing efficiency. So you may want to test various different ones over a period of time, A, B, test them, see which gives you the best results. This is a great way of checking all of that out. So that's the first one, dealing with abandoned carts to make sure that you try to get as many of those abandoned carts and checkouts into an actual converted sale. Next on the list is all about handling people that are about to leave your website. These are called exit intent. In other words, they intend to leave the page for whatever reason. Could be just open up another tab, another browser to do something else, but they could potentially forget all about what they're doing and therefore not actually purchase anything. A cool way of being able to handle this is to use what are called exit intent pop-ups. These are pretty nifty and can be used in a lot of different ways. Let me show you how easy it is to set one up. And because our store is already connected up to our OmniSend dashboard, we don't need to do anything else. We just need to create whatever kind of exit intent pop-up we want or whatever kind of pop-up we want full stop, tell it where and when to use it, and it will automatically work with our site. It's pretty painless and seamless. Okay, so let's go into the form section this time. And what we're going to do is we're going to say create a form. Again, we've got a bunch of different templates we can use. So let's say we like the look of these kind of Wheel of Fortune ones. Let's go for the special treat Wheel of Fortune. Let's use this template. And now we can start to customize this. So you can see we've got a nice, easy drag and drop visual editor, simple to use. Want to add extra things in, you can simply drag them over, drop them into your design and start customizing them from the options on the right hand side. Want to get rid of it? Not a problem. We'll delete that block. Legal consent, phone numbers, you can create basic or as advanced as you want. And again, you can start from scratch if you want to, or you can take one of these templates and customize them. So once we've done that, then we've got the options over on the right hand side for the behavior and for the theme settings. We'll leave the theme settings for now, but you can use this to kind of customize various different aspects, like how you want this to display, like a pop up, a fly out. You know, you get the idea, the position and so on. There's a bunch of options here as well, including the styles. I'm more interested in the behavior because this is where we can control how, when and where this will actually work. So let's start off with the audience management. Open this up and you can search for tags. So if you start to tag your audience inside OmniSend, you can use this to only target very specific people, a very specific demographic. You kind of get the idea. So you can get really controlled to make sure you don't annoy customers that are good buyers and maybe the ones that are, well, they're not so good. You could use these incentives to help push them over the edge to make a purchase. Then you've got scheduling and you can choose when this will actually start and end. So this is a time sensitive kind of offer you want to do. Set a start date. Choose the date you want, set an end date, set the date you want. You get the idea. Pretty simple. Then we've got the display options. So this is where you can control how this is displayed. What we want to do, though, this is going to be an exit intent. In other words, they're about to go and move away from our web page. So we want to capture their attention. We'll choose exit intent, and that's that done. Targeting, again, you can see we can target various different options. So we've got all visitors, don't show to existing contacts, existing contacts, target specific segment. You've got your page targeting, so you can choose appears on a URL, does not appear on a URL, appears on pages for out of stock products. So again, you can see you can get granular on how you want to do this. Source targeting, so you can see where they actually come from and then they try to exit, for example. So it allows you to, to check out and connect this up to maybe Google ads or Facebook ads and so on. Then you've got UTM parameters or UTM targeting, and this allows you then to easily be able to track with specific codes and things any of the pop-ups or any of the advertising and promotion options you use inside OmniSend. Again, we'll leave those as they are. Visibility, show on all devices. You may only want to show this on desktop, mobile, tablet, whatever you want. Control that here so you have different ones for different use cases. And the frequency, so limit the appearance. I'm going to disable that for me just so I can demonstrate it, but you'd probably want to put that on there not to annoy potential buyers. And then finally, you've got A-B testing should you want to do that, and you can set up some A-B testing with different titles and the split that you want to set and all those kinds of good things. Once you've set it all up, then we can go and click Enable Form. And, oh, look, we've got a couple of errors. One of the nice things about working with this in OmniSend is if you don't configure everything correctly, it'll pop up. It won't allow you to sort of set this running so you can't accidentally have a pop-up that doesn't work properly. So now all we need to do is go and fix those issues. As you can see, it tells us we need to put a couple of discount codes in. So let's just do that. 
So check for issues, there we go, everything is looking good. Let's enable that form and boom, we've now got that set up. Okay, let's take it for a test drive. Let's go and take a look at our products on our store. I like the look of this t-shirt, so let's check that out. Mm, looks pretty, oh, my phone's ringing, I best go. And there you go, you can see once we try to exit, we get this little pop-up, enter in my email, click spin it. That's then gonna create this nice little spinning kind of thing. And then we'll find out, did we get a deal? If we did, cool. But we've also got their email address now so we can capture that information. And there you go, there's our unique code. So we can use that code now for whatever discount or whatever it is we've set them up for. So again, it's another one of those options that it's a good way of being able to keep people on your website, give them an incentive to convert them into a paying customer and not ultimately lose them when something distracts them to move away from your web page. So the third option is all about nurturing those people that have already purchased from you. It's much easier to get someone to buy a second item than it is to find a new customer. And to do that, we use nurturing options within email automation sequences. So let's come into our automations one more time. From there, let's create a new workflow. And from here, you can see what happens now. So you can see we've got goals, convert subscribers, recover visitors, cross sales, build loyalty, reactivate customers. Let's say we want to reactivate customers. So now we've got a couple of different pre-built workflows we can choose from. Let's take this customer reactivation as a good option. Re-engage your idle customers who haven't made any new orders for a selected period of time. Sounds exactly like we're looking for. Let's customize that workflow. So now if we take a look, we've got a workflow very similar to the one we saw right back at the beginning of this video. First of all, like we saw before, we've got this trigger. If we select the trigger and take a look on the right-hand side, you can see the trigger action is placed an order. So they must have placed an order for this trigger to actually start. Then we've got the wait 30 days. So if they haven't bought anything in the last 30 days, this is where they will be. And then they'll come down to the we miss you email. So is everything okay? So we've got we miss you, is everything all right? And you can see we've got an email then that says, we've missed you. How about us 15% off your next order? Give you a good reason to go and buy something else. This is a single email sequence. So you can easily set up something as simple as this, or you can get a lot more comprehensive should you want to. So you may want to set another delay after this. We'll say, let's wait for 14 days. So let's say we'll add an email underneath now. So we'll wait 14 days, send another email out, and now we can create a custom email with whatever incentive or incentives that we want. Maybe some products are on special offer, maybe a unique deal, buy one, get one free. You know, you get the idea. Whatever you want to do to incentivize and convert them to actually go and purchase something. But when you take what I've covered in this video and you start to action this and Start off with the three that I've just covered here, but then expand upon them. So abandon cart, abandon checkout, deal with different email sequences, different ones to get people back on board if they haven't purchased over a set period of time. Take a little bit of time to set these automations up and these things that don't require your involvement, and you'll very quickly find that your store will become far more optimized and conversion focused than just basically having a standard vanilla online store with none of these things in place. The reason why you should implement these is because they're tried and tested methods that work for millions of different customers and vendors all over the world. So if you want to learn more, check out the link in the description for OmniSend. Check out the playlist that I've created on OmniSend to show you some of the other things you can do. And as always, I do welcome your feedback. Let me have your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.